The Generators, the true heart of the zone. Despite the obvious importance of these generators, we don't learn much about them in the games. So many questions remain unanswered. What's the purpose of the generators? Why only four out of six of them are working in Shadow of Chernobyl, and none in Clear Sky? What's the lore behind all of this? Hello stalkers, and welcome to the Anomalous Dugout. In this video, we will try to answer these questions by taking a look at the lore behind the generators, and by making some theories of our own. Let us start with what we know from the released games. The generators are a group of six sphere-shaped structures located on the site of the Chernobyl nuclear power plant. These spheres surround a strange-looking brick building and are very impressive by their huge size. They can be seen in both Shadow of Chernobyl and Clear Sky but in different conditions. Indeed, in Clear Sky all the generators appear to be turned off. Meanwhile, in Shadow of Chernobyl, four out of the six globes are working. They emit a weird electric glow that goes towards the sky. The two generators that are not working appear to have been damaged. We can note that this damage was already present in Clear Sky, and we don't really know what could have caused it. Even though it is never directly confirmed, we can confidently assume that the generators were built by the scientists of the group, as part of their experiments to interact with the Noosphere. In case you don't know, a team of scientists working in the zone known as the Group discovered a special informational field around the Earth called the Noosphere. The Group believed they could change the Noosphere in order to remove negative emotions such as anger, cruelty, and greed. To do so, they created the Common Consciousness an entity composed of the united consciousnesses of seven volunteers, which, unlike normal people, would be able to affect the Noosphere. They did manage to do so, but not in the way they intended, provoking the appearance of a breach in the Earth's Noosphere, and subsequently the birth of the Anomalous Zone in 2006. It is suspected that the generators played a huge role into this. Either they are the source of the sea consciousness's power, which I doubt, as we will see later, or they are responsible for the link of the sea consciousness with the Noosphere, which I believe is more likely. Apart from these observations, not much is known about the generators, as they are never mentioned anywhere in the games, at least as far as I know. However, this was not always the case. Initially, the generators were supposed to play a much more important role in Stoker's story. In fact, in old versions of the game, the generators were actually an entire level, separated from the power plant, located north of it. This level was to be the true center of the zone instead of the CNPP. It was a desolated place with large anomalous formations located around the generators, which were placed in a circle in the middle of the area. Nearby, a monolith base was the entrance of the final secret laboratory, the one where the sea consciousness would be found. Back then, the ultimate goal of the player was to disable the generators, which supposedly were responsible for the emissions and the very existence of the zone. While all of that was cut from the final game, the generator's map can still be found in old builds as well as in many mods, but the fact is, none of this is canon anymore. So. If the generators from the old concepts were the real center of the zone, 
it is very likely that the generators we got on release are the heart of the zone as well. In the PDA entry about the second Chernobyl disaster, we can read The satellites helped to establish that the epicenter of the explosion was not actually in the vicinity of the NPP reactors, but about half a kilometer away. At first glance, this seems to refer to the old generators that were not found on the site of the power plant. But honestly, it still makes sense with their new placement. The proof is that the distance between the generators and the site of the first disaster, Reactor 4 under the sarcophagus, is roughly 400 meters, which is almost half a kilometer. Moreover, Major Kalietsky in Clear Sky will also confirm that the center of the zone is in fact on the site of the power plant. An interesting detail to note from this dialogue is that satellites can't fly over the heart of the zone without being destroyed by the insane amount of interferences. Anyway, now is the time to wonder, what is the real purpose of the generators? As I mentioned earlier, I do not believe that they are the source of the sea consciousness's power. There are multiple reasons for this. Firstly, the idea that there is one generator for each person connected to the sea consciousness is evidently wrong. The number of bodies forming the sea consciousness was more than six from the very beginning. The consciousnesses of seven volunteers were connected during the experiment leading to the creation of the superconsciousness that is us. Furthermore, we can clearly see that there are eight pods. Sure, maybe some pods are empty, but it still shows that the system was designed for a maximum of eight people. So why make only six generators then? Secondly, and more importantly, the generators are simply turned off during the events of Clear Sky, despite the fact that the sea consciousness is well and truly alive. Because of this, it appears that the sea consciousness does not depend on the generators. In fact, it is probably the other way around. The generators are a tool used by the sea consciousness. My theory is that the generators are responsible for the link between the sea consciousness and the noosphere. Originally, they were used to enter into contact with the informational field. But after the appearance of the zone, their purpose changed. According to the sea consciousness representative, their goal following the disaster was to prevent the growth of the zone. If we consider that emissions are the events providing the zone with more anomalous energy, restraining the zone means reducing the intensity and frequency of these emissions. Therefore, I think that the generators were working like a protective system, something that would slow down the emissions. This theory completely checks out with what we can observe in game. First of all, the generators don't draw something from the noosphere, but on the contrary, they seem to emit something towards it. If you have seen my video about the noosphere, then you will understand that, perhaps, the generators are redirecting some of the energy leaking from the noosphere back into its place. Moreover, the fact that the generators are active in Shadow of Chernobyl and turned off in Clear Sky would also make perfect sense. Indeed, the whole plot of Clear Sky is that the zone is lashing out, triggering emission after emission. This is exactly what would happen if the generators, supposed to slow down the emissions, were not working. The sea consciousness probably deactivated them intentionally so that the powerful and unpredictable emissions would stop Strerok. Meanwhile, only one blowout happens during the events of Shadow of Chernobyl, which are supposed to take place over the course of a few months. 
This is a normal situation when the generators are turned on. In fact, emissions were also much less frequent before the events of clear sky, as explained by a scientist in the opening scene. According to our research, the next emission will not occur for at least two months, four days and seven hours. Finally, all of this also checks out with what happens in Call of Pripyat. In the third game, emissions happen regularly, a bit like it was in Clear Sky. This is because Strelok destroyed the sea consciousness, causing the generators to be left unpiloted. So, to resume, my theory is that the generators were used to restrain the zone and the blowouts, which is, by the way, the complete opposite of what was initially planned by the devs. Before the events of Clear Sky, the generators were working fine, and emissions only happened every few months. During the events of Clear Sky, the sea consciousness turned off the generators to unleash the wrath of the zone, resulting in more powerful and very frequent emissions. After the end of Clear Sky, the generators were turned back on, bringing back stability to the zone until the end of Shadow of Chernobyl. After Strelok destroyed the sea consciousness, the generators could not work properly anymore, leading to an increase in blowouts as seen in Call of Pripyat. So, everything checks out. If that theory is true, we can imagine that a plot point in the upcoming Stalker 2 would be to figure out how the generators work and how to turn them back on to prevent the growth of the zone. But that's just speculation. Maybe the developers will prefer to retcon this version of the generators in order to bring back the old concepts. Who knows? In any case, make sure to tell me what you think about it in the comments down below. Thank you very much for watching, stalkers, and goodbye.